Hello there, it's Anasiga here today and today I am going to be making lots of, well a set of Christmas tags using the peppermint paper smooth pad in A2 size, you can of course use any size at all and the nested layers tag style from scrapbook.com as well as the new stamp set called Merry Little Christmas Now I'm just figuring out which Distress Oxide colours I want so I just die cut the tags and then match them to my swatch sheet. And I have my foam for each colour and I store these on this laminated piece of paper where I have labelled each and every one and they stay there put with uh, the help of a tiny little velcro. So then I have all my foams ready to use when I want to and I don't have to store them alongside the actual ink blending tool so it gives me a lot of free space. So I have three different sizes of tags that I'm going to use. I have two white and one of the colour that I want and I want to ink all the edges to each of these because I will be layering these three different sizes to create one tag. Now I wanted the uh, ink to actually match the cardstock, I didn't want it to be too dark because I mainly wanted that same colour to be on the edges of each of the white cardstock just to create a little bit of a soft dreamy kind of look I guess and even though you can't really see it on the uh, colour tag you still get a tiny hint of shadow. So now I'm going to be picking the uh, stamps I'm going to use. I'm using three different ones for these tags and I am stamping that on the smallest tag. Now on this one I'm using Noel and I'm going to be stamping that with my Versamark ink and when I use Versamark or any heat embossing I always make sure to use anti-static powder so it basically helps me to keep the uh, paper as clean as possible, I guess. And you have all different kinds of anti-static pouches. And I really like to use the pouch. It works the best for me, so I'll stick to what works. And if it's a bit too much, just use a dry paintbrush to spread the powder. And then I just stamp that on. And then all I have to do is to heat emboss and I'm using gold embossing powder from Ranger and this is super fine. I absolutely love these embossing powders. They are very detailed so you get all those pretty little details of any stamp that you use. They just work every time, I love them. And then my handy tweezers to make sure that I don't burn myself too much. Yes, it does happen, but the tweezer makes it a bit easier, or well, less likely to hurt myself. <laughs> and now when the everything is shiny, then you know the embossing powder is all melted. I'm just making sure that it's dry, because now I'm going to be inking the edges of the smallest tack. Now the reason for I didn't ink that before is that if I add the oxide ink to the edges, the embossing powder might stick to it, so this way it's just easier. And I'm just inking all the edges, so all these have the same kind of inking around them, no matter the colour. Now, I of course need to punch a hole or create a hole. I could have done that beforehand because this set comes with the uh, hole punch as well. I could have just used from the beginning but I didn't but that's okay I can just figure out where I want the uh, punch to be and you get a little bit of a hint of a line there so that you can actually place it in the correct spot and you have your pretty hole and of course you can use a hole punch if you have that totally up to you what you have and now I'm just layering these on the tag itself I was actually thinking about using foam tape, but then I decided no, I want to be able to write on 
the tag itself. So if it's not dimensional or 3, 3D dimensional, it is easier. So I decided to keep these simple and just layer them like such and without any foam tape. Now this is a tag. So of course I need ribbon and stuff, right? So I'm using Baker's twine just from my stash and then I went through my drawers of ribbon. Yes, I have loads of ribbon and just found something that matched the color nicely. And now I'm just adding the uh, larger ribbon to the tag and keeping this tight, but make sure not to be too tight because this is paper and if you were too forceful, you might break it. So I'm using these in two goes and then I'm just wrapping the twine around the ribbon itself to make sure that it doesn't go loose or anything. And since I want to be using the twine to actually tie the tag to the package or whatever I'm going to use, I'm going to make the uh, larger ribbon into a bow. I am not a bow master, but I'll just take my time and fiddle it until I am happy with the way it looks. And then I'm just making sure that the ends look pretty. I do like that V cut on ribbon, so therefore I use that quite often. And that is the tag ready. But of course, I need a bit more sparkliness. So I'm using the uh, Pops of Colour in gold. Absolutely beautiful. This is full of sparkliness. Absolutely love it. And I'm just adding dots here and there. I'm just squeezing the bottle very gently, and then releasing it and swirling it and letting go. And that way you get a beautiful pearl-like finish or pearl shape finish, sorry. And that's the tag ready. All shiny and colorful. And here you have the three ones. I use the Joy, Oh Dear, and then Noel. And this is one I made as well. So this is really shiny, pretty, and like I said, you can use whatever ribbon you have on hand. Of course, any color cardstock works beautifully. Now, when I create these tags, I always have a little bit of cardstock left. So I usually die cut these tiny ones that are in the set, keep them in this jar from scrap.com, and then I have tiny little pretties to use whenever I need. Great way to store those extra bits. And that's the cards ready. I will have links to everything I use down below. And thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.